Please take your Bible and turn to Proverbs 18, verse 24. The Bible said, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know, in our society, I, I don't know that it's been magnified as much as it possibly could have been with the difficulties that we face over the past years. But loneliness is a true problem. From an article from a website called The Problems in Society, there's an uh, article written, and the title of it is The Campaign to End Loneliness. And they give some social statistics that are very, um, really, they're shocking. But I want you to listen to what it says about this issue of loneliness. Health risks are associated with loneliness and social isolation and comparable to the dangers of smoking and obesity. Increasing mortality risk is up by 30%. That's extremely high. Feeling alone increases the risk of death by 26% while social isolation and living alone increases mortality risk by 29 and 32% respectively. Social connections have a profound influence on risk for mortality and are associated with a 30% risk and in increased early death. Loneliness is as lethal as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, according to researcher Juliana Holustad. Loneliness affects more than one-third American adults, with particular likelihood among individuals facing challenging circumstances like lost loved ones or chronic illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, mental illness, or cancer. Loneliness is worse than obe uh, obesity. These are all from studies. Loneliness and social isolation are an increased risk of developing coronary heart disease and stroke. Loneliness also increases high blood pressure. Loneliness with severe depression is associated with early mortality, and loneliness is a risk factor for depression in later life. Loneliness and social isolation put individuals at a greater risk of cognitive decline and dementia. Loneliness has negative effects on mental health, worsening depression, anxiety, mood disorders, cognitive decline, and on physical health, leading to a higher rates of cardiovascular impairment, chronic pain, and fatigue. Young people, certain age groups, notably adolescents and young adults and older adults, seem to be particularly at risk as marked by growing incidents of depression substance abuse, and suicide. This is contributed through external factors that may be accelerated. Research indicates that the internet and social media and engaged uh, feelings are, are engagement of feelings of loneliness, depression, and anxiety, according to a 2014 study of college students. Harvard Magazine has an article, it says, entitled The Loneliness Pandemic. The psychology and social cost of isolation in everyday life. This professor of psychiatric epidemiology at Harvard, her last name is Co Cohenen, listen at this. Loneliness begets loneliness. Quote, if you're lonely, almost the last thing you want to do is reach out, Cohen says, but you have to make yourself you see, look at the verse. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. This word must is not optional. See, it's not optional, but it demands you to get out of your comfort zone. And the issue of showing himself friendly is not a passive position. It's very proactive to uh, demand what watch watch this look at the verse and see what it demands a man that hath friends must show himself friendly so friend it demands not only it, it says you must if you're going to have friends you must show yourself friendly 
And what it demands is that the responsibility, the first step is on your, your, that's your responsibility. You have to make the first step. It says show himself friendly. There's a res- if you think about the practical cons- considerations of your own responsibility, I know that there's people that are hard to get along with, they're obnoxious, and, and some people are just flat, flat out un- unfriendly. I, I, was in, uh, I went to a Kroger grocery store the other day, and as I was standing by the organic lemons, even though, whatever, who knows if they are or they're not, I bought some. But uh, maybe I'm standing right almost shoulder to shoulder with another guy. And I look over at him and I said, how you doing? And he looked at me and turned around and walked off. Now there's several possibilities. There's several possibilities that he could not hear me. Uh, There's possibility that I missed the fact that he may have had his earbuds in. But then I was thinking, maybe it was the cowboy hat that scared him. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but, but he just turned around and walked off. So what, what did I do? Well, I went in the next business. And uh, it was an Asian business. And I walked in the business and I told the lady, my name is Lee and this is my wife, Tam. And she goes, Lee and Tam. I said, yes. And then I ordered whatever I wanted. And so we went back the next day, and I said, hey, and I mentioned her name, and I said, hey, Annie, how are you doing? She said, hello, Lee. She said, you know why it's so easy for me to remember your name? It's because Lee's a common Chinese name. I said, okay, well, that's good. But, you know, instead of being rude like that guy was, she gave me an extra tea. She said, don't worry about that. You just take that. Now, what would have happened had I said, those jokers, man, right? You ever wave at a neighbor and they just ride down the road like this? <laughs> you're out in the yard. Hey, you know, because every time you drive by them, you're like, bump, bump, and they're waving, you're waving back. But when it's their, their turn to come by, you wave. I mean, you, I think sometimes you stand in the road and go, hey, how you doing? And they wouldn't respond to you, right? But for you to say that, you have friends, God said, you must show yourself friendly. There's no warnings about that people are going to be rude. There's no past experiences that you can say, well, that happened, so therefore I'm not. There's no exceptions to the rule in the verse. Being a child is a very difficult thing because children can be excessively mean to each other. Adults have just grown not to make it so grotesque of a violation of being mean to one another. But it doesn't change the fact that I need to be friendly. Now, look at the second part of the verse. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. This theologically is speaking of Jesus Christ. Sticketh closer than a brother. This, these three words, that sticketh closer. These two words, I should say. These two words means adhering or cleave or joining. And I'm going to give you this to you in rapid fashion. Jesus Christ is a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother because he died for me and provided for my salvation. The Bible said, for when you were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die, yet uh, pre-adventure a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love uh, toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So here it says that scarcely for a righteous man would die. And then you, you, you look at the issue that... Uh, some would uh, come to a place where they would dare to die for somebody that, that is a good man, but for the unjust, and that's what he did, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I'm going to ask you to go with me to First John chapter 4 and look with me in verse 10 and 11. First John 4, 10 and 11. 
So a man that has friends must show himself friendly. Young people may say, well, I don't have any friends. Well, then how friendly are you being? And, and listen, the older you get, the more, you, the more history you have with human beings. So if, it's not, if you're not careful, you wind up with what's called cynicism. You, you get so, so used to getting popped upside the head, right? Hello? And, and, and as that, you think, well, I'm not, I'm not even going to go to the effort because that's how it's going to be. And you're, you're, you're making judgments that are not based on the truth. Yeah, human nature is pretty bad, but how are you? Yeah, how have you been? Are you, okay, so I must, I, I, I must show myself friendly. Now, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 10, Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Look at verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Notice, notice, God is proactive He's the first one to step forward about our salvation, correct? So a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And don't think you got, don't think God had given you the example. God's given you a, an example of giving. God's given you an example of sacrificial giving. God's given you an example of the, of the sacrifice of the Son of God for us. He's very proactive. And it's not that we love God, but that he first loved us. And God said, I have taken the first step toward you. Now, what you need to do, because God loves you, look at this, verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. <coughs> Excuse me. That word ought is a duty to obligation. That is not passive. A duty to obligation. People are not lovable. Would you agree? Okay, there's the three of us do. But thank God that Jesus Christ paid for my sin, provided the way, and he loved me first. Well, what about my growth? Go with me. We're gonna, well, I'm going to have you turn to, to, to some scripture. Prover, I, I'm sorry, Psalm 103. Let's go there quickly. Psalm 103, and then we'll come back to Psalm 78. So look, look, look at Psalm 103, verse 13 and 14. Okay, before we read the verses, look this way. God, God he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother because of my salvation. But he sticketh closer than a brother in my growth as a Christian. Because he's very patient with me. Man, he's really, really patient with me. Verse 13, Psalm 103, verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Psalm 78, please. Look there. Psalm 78. Look at me in verse 38 and verse 39. But he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he, turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh and a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. If you think about the patience of God, you think about how, as a father, we could be impatient with a, a little child, but a mother has great patience. That she, God gives a woman something that's just amazing in the area of being patient with those babies. But God has been very gracious with us. So first of all, in my salvation. Second of all, in my growth. Under my growth, he is very patient with me, He's been very gracious to me. And God has been very gracious with us in all aspects of our lives. And you know, when we have interactions with people, you know, if we have a duty to love people, then we have a duty to react to people and respond to people in a right way. We have the interaction with them, but we also need to minister grace unto them. Look at me in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Ephesians 4, 29.
How is God a God that, how is he one that, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Because he saved me. And when he saved me, he sanctified me. But in my sanctification, he is seriously patient with me in my Christian growth. He's patient with me. He's very gracious. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It doesn't mean that you can't say what's right. It doesn't mean that you can't lay down correction. But we need to be gracious with what we say and what comes out of our mouth. Because ministering and, and grace and mercy sometimes has to do with personal restraint in my words. Because sometimes there's things that need to be said, but I'm not, I'm not right where I need to be, therefore I don't need to respond. But God always has always given me the right response. God has always given me something in his word to help me, to encourage me. He is a wonderful, wonderful Savior. You say, well, hey, I, I'm lonely today. Well, as humans go, God tells you, you need to be proactive. You need to take the first steps. And listen, people are not going to respond to you the, uh, like, like you expect. So just expect that I'm going to obey. And God said, eventually, I'll have friends. But you, you say, I'm going to live in isolation. I don't need nobody else. No, you need to make yourself available to other people. There's nothing wrong with calling somebody on the phone and say, hey, do you mind if I come by or you mind if we go this? Uh, right? Hello? Yeah, right. So if you think about sometimes restraining my words and being gracious, one man said this, a wise man once said nothing. So there's sometimes, yeah, you didn't get that, did you? A wise man once said nothing. There's times in my life where I need to restrain what I say. But when I administer grace and mercy to uh, my friend, I also need to understand God's been patient with me, God's been gracious with me, and God has been excessively mercy, uh, merciful to all of us. I want you to look at me in Lamentations. Go with me to the book of Lamentations. That's in the Old Testament. And it's right after, right after um, the book of Jeremiah. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. How has God been my friend that sticks closer than a brother? My salvation, my growth, his patience with me, his graciousness to me, his mercy to me. Lamentations 3.22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Hey, do you know that you could be a friend to somebody that you, you, can't, you can't provide their salvation, but you can certainly point them to Jesus Christ to save them. But also as they grow in the Lord and grow in your relationship, you can be patient with them one another. You can be gracious with one another. You can sometimes restrain your words when you want to say something else. And you can be very merciful. Last thing, my future. How is it that Jesus Christ is a friend that sticks closer than a brother? My future. See, in my future, God gives me promise for living today. God teaches me that if I live for him today I, as a saved person... God's going to bless that. And that's a wonderful thing. Amen. And I know that for every day that I live, I can rely on God's strength to sustain me and strengthen my life personally. Yep. You may say, preacher, you have no idea how lonely I am. Listen, missing somebody in your life, is, is I, I believe, would be a different aspect of saying I'm lonely. And though you may be lonely in those issues, and, and, and listen, I, I'm not speaking from experience. What I am telling you on this issue of knowing Bible truth and what I have experienced in my own personal life, Jesus Christ will manifest himself to you. Will, he is a friend that's taken closer than a brother. And you just need to understand that God has prepared your future. The Bible said that his mercies are new every morning. What a friend he is.
Great is thy faithfulness. And I want you to look with me in, in Revelation chapter 1, and we're done. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Isn't it true about human nature of the Christian that though we know the truth, that there's many times that we experience emotions or experience different circumstances in our lives? And what, what do we depart from? We walk off from the Word of God and walk off, theoretically, we walk off from Jesus Christ in our own life and just realize, well, what am I doing? I, I, I'm, my, my relationship could be greater than what it is. How is he a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Number one, my salvation. Number two, my growth. He's very patient with me. He's very graceful to me. He's been excessively merciful to me every day of my life. But he's also prepared my future and teaching me how to live and helped me how to live my life. And then the promise of the future. Revelation 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of this earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Every hand bowed, every eye closed.